You look awesome. great. Thank you. Do you notice the, uh, as do you, I, I can't see what your shirt says. It says good. Oh, I think it's a Halloween shirt. I think it's um, uh, <laughs> Chucky. Uh, okay. So I'm, but it, it does look festive. I have, you know, I have some festive uh, Christmas shirts, but um, I mean, sweaters. But then I grabbed this one because, um, you know, Halloween did just end, you know, and you don't get enough time to wear your Halloween sweaters, you know. Every day is Halloween, as Ministry once said. You could always do a movie. <laughs> could always do a movie. Uh, Halloween on Mars, sort of the, <laughs> the prequel. The prequel to Christmas. People somewhere. have mentioned that. I was like, See, not the <laughs> not the same thing. But I don't know if I would want to purposely do another movie set in space. Well, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of props and it's a lot of stuff, you know. Well, since I've got you, you know, we're talking about narratives and, you know, that was a movie, Christmas on Mars. But since I've got you to talk about the anniversary, the 20th anniversary of Yoshimi Battles of the Pink Robots, I don't yeah. know if you can see the shirt I am I, wearing. I love that. Yeah. That's, this. Yeah. That's amazing. You, Thank you. Yeah. This is from the play, the musical that you did. It, I went to see it in San Diego. I can't believe it, it was is. actually 10 years ago, I believe, as of this year. Well, as, as, as well, as you get older, the 10 years doesn't seem like as much. I would, I would agree with you. I mean, I only know it's 10 years because I see dates here and there, but if I didn't see dates all the time, I would think like, yeah, maybe five or six years ago. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. Yeah. So I loved it. As soon as, uh, you know, I found out there was a flaming lips musical in the works, you know, at the time, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully destined for Broadway. I was like, I got to go see it. Drove down to San Diego, got the shirt, really enjoyed it. Have the program somewhere. And um, since we're talking about the anniversary of Yoshimi, I really would like to, I've talked to you about the album before and I'd like to talk more about it, but I really love to talk about this musical and what exactly happened with it or if there's well, still I'll, any hope for it to be rebooted or something. Well, you know, this is, you know, the, the director is Des McEnough. Now he's not famous to the world, but I mean, in, in Broadway circles, you know, he's, he's like a, He's like a big, successful, um, and, and well-respected and lovely, lovely, lovely uh, guy and director and visionary and all that. Um, he, I mean, he's the one responsible for that. You know, he was listening to this Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots. Um, back then it would have been a CD that he was putting in his car. <laughs> he was driving from, I probably doing that same drive that you did back and forth from, um, going to LA, visiting his, in San Diego, going back and forth, um, visiting his wife's, his then wife's dying father. So his father, mm. is that father-in-law? Is that what that is? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this album is playing through these months and you know how music and driving and circumstances and all that can really, you know, it, it can, it can, make you hear things in the music um which is you know um so um he had a great irony as the, uh, the mean that to turn this this uh, yoshimi battles the pink rope you know into some kind of story that in his version of the of the story you know the pink robots are like you know, I, I, I'm, I'm screwing it up, but it's something like, you know, they're the, the, the cells that battle the cancer mm -hmm. cells inside of the character Yoshimi's body in, in, in the Broadway. Uh, I, I, believe, I, I believe that's the According yeah. to Wikipedia, I believe the robots were the enemies, like the bad cells, but I could be wrong. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. But basically, no, that's it's, I mean. a, it's I, yeah. a cancer battle go kind of personified by these characters right. on the stage, which is pretty interesting. I didn't know what I when I went to go see it. You know, I was just a fan of the record. I thought, you know, I thought maybe because some people think that Yoshimi is a concept record. I believe you debunked that. But I thought I had no idea it was no. going to be about cancer. Right. I mean, well, I mean, it's a concept record, but I think like most uh the way that you know bands anyway do concept records is you know you have these very thin themes that you know go through it and because you're using the same oh you know philosophical perspective and the same sort of little instruments and the same sort of sounds and atmospheres um you know it vaguely feels like some 
story is being told. And so, um, and that allows you a lot of freedom, you know, as a songwriter and producer and all the stuff that you want to do. Um, I don't think we would have a song called Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots if it didn't feel like it had some other story connected to it, even though we don't really know what the story is. I mean, I, little by little now I'm putting together a story that I feel like is is our version of it. Um, so at the time, you know, when we were coming up with this, the 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 songs and the and the album art and all these things that you have to do um yeah i think we felt like it 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 was enough of a concept album like like all concept albums that we know i mean maybe there's a few that are more mm. flushed out but you know most most bands when they say okay. concept album it would be more like oh you know the way that pink floyd's dark side of the moon is a concept album it's like it's a bunch of songs and they're all relating to the same perspective or whatever and you know it just gives you a great freedom to be let your imagination come up with whatever it whatever it does you know and so anytime that can happen you know as a songwriter and stuff you're like yeah that that's a good that's a good thing <laughs> well i think it's really interesting that this director des mackinough you know he was listening to yoshimi and he was going through a a cancer th uh situation yeah. with his father-in-law yeah. and then wanted to make this musical that because obviously that's a concept that's run through your music including the soft yeah. and songs like race for the prize and and superman totally. yeah and 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 he would listen to the soft bolt and and really all of our records i mean that the musical that you saw um 10 years ago it it didn't just have um yoshimi battles right. the pink robots it you know right. it had uh, it's probably 30 songs in it you know it's mm -hmm. quite a few songs so it's a lot of soft bolt and 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 then either uh, some other stuff as well so yeah the, yeah so what so, happened? Because yeah. I know that Aaron Sorkin from the West Wing was involved and in, at a <laughs> point and at some point, you know, he he left the project or whatever. I don't know if that's why it never went to Broadway or whatever. But what happened there? Well, no, I mean, I think I think Des, I, I, he's still working on it. I think these are, you know, this is a project of his. It's not really a project of mine. I mean, even okay. though he, everything that he does about it, he wants my approval. I don't, he doesn't really need my approval. I, I love him and whatever his vision can be, that would, it's going to be fine with me. It's going to be great. So it isn't. And so I think this, this showing that he did in, in uh, the, the, the playhouse in La Jolla, um, I think it's like a way that he previews his, ideas and the way that he's like is this working are people reacting to this and it's, it's not uncommon for you know things to have different legs of like it you know it premiered here but then five years later it's going to premiere there and he's just going to keep working on it okay. so i don't really know i mean i so you know well, i don't i don't know all the ins and outs of the way you know broadway musicals work but that's not that uncommon to sort of be like okay. oh yeah it's 20 years in the making and you know for these big projects that take lots of millions of dollars and all that sort of stuff it's like oh okay you know so yeah yeah so see i'm curious but the aaron that... sorkin part is yeah is, is, i mean i don't remember it all that precisely but we did a meeting we were in new york city i think we were going to be on like the david letterman show or something and in the afternoon we were going to meet with some potential writers and one of them was was aaron um mm -hmm. which was like oh you know of course, Des knows him. I don't know him, you know, but Des knows him. And, but at the same time, um, there was a strike on Broadway. That day, there was a strike, um, which meant, you know, all their theaters were shut down. I think it was uh, some some something in the union that didn't let anything play on Broadway. And of course, the, you know, that's millions of dollars leaving. That's people out of work. And in Aaron's case, that's a that's a big deal. He had two or three that were shut down that day, and and Des as well. He had two or three that were shutting down that day. So a lot of stuff on their mind. And here's my little, <laughs> you know, my little record, and they're talking about what it could be. And um, we were only allowed to meet for probably twenty minutes or something, you know. Um, and Aaron um, said he and this you got to remember this is two thousand and two maybe it's 2003 but it's you know it's a long long time ago but it's not that long after um the world trade center uh planes you know the the 9 11 stuff happened mm. and and we were still dealing with um 
George Bush Jr. You know, uh, he was the president. And mm -hmm. um, and Aaron wanted to make it about that. He saw uh -huh. the pink robots as being like the evil George empire. I mean, George Bush empire. And, um, and I, you know, I really... I don't know why I was so opinionated. Um, I just said, oh, I don't really like that idea. <laughs> Oops. And was the meeting over that after had, that? Not that I had a better idea. I just, I, you know, I just didn't see this music as being connected to politics and stuff. You know, I mean, I was right. feel like, the you know, Yoshimi battles pink robots. It's going to last forever. And George Bush will be gone in a couple of years. Who cares? You know, but um, I think he was like, oh, well, so you're going to say no to my idea. I mean, he wasn't mean. There was nothing bad said. I just got the feeling that he was like, well, that's the way I see it. And if you don't see it that way, see you later. <laughs> well, I think you probably had the right yeah. call. because We're talking about, you know, 10 years later, and we've had two different presidents since then. So I just want to know, if, like, obviously you have limited knowledge, but it sounds like there's still hope for it because I feel there's a lot of like rock leaning musicals now, you know, Jagged Little Pill by Alon with featuring Alanis's music. Yeah. Won yeah, all yeah. these Tonys and like there was the Go-Go's musical. And I want to see the Flame Lips of the Tony Awards. I want to get you one more right. letter towards an EGOT because you already won a <laughs> Grammy and your first Grammy was for Yoshimi, the album. So, you know, full circle if we can get you a, well, a T to go with the G. Yeah, no, I mean, no, I, I agree. And 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 it's a it's it's a great um it's a great entertaining um you know, musical. I mean, I, I don't know what your feeling was when you were there, but I mean, they're mm -hmm. powerful things. I mean, we watched um, even one of his other uh, plays that he was working on in rehearsal. He allowed us to come see some rehearsals he was doing just to give an idea of the setup and all that. And, you know, when you're in there, it's emotional. You know, people next to me were crying, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, um, my friend was crying because I invited her and neither of us knew what it was going to be about. And uh, unbeknownst to us, it you know, it was obviously cancer themed and her father had just passed of cancer and she was sobbing yeah. throughout in a, in a good way, in a cathartic way, yeah. sobbing throughout it. Right. I mean, so, yeah, I mean, we see how really how common this is and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and yeah. And, and, and it's well done, of course. And, and the music's emotional and having people, I mean, that's the thing about Broadway. It's real people singing it, real people playing it right there in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's a powerful experience, but like I said, I don't know all the ins and outs of all the stuff and, you know, and, and Des, even at that time, was probably um, working on, you know, five or six things, right. some in development, some working, some not working, you know. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. I, I, I would we say I, I don't really know. <laughs> That's fine. But I mean, it would obviously, if it did happen, it'd be great to coincide with the, the 20th anniversary of the album Yoshimi, because as I mentioned, this was a really yeah. big watershed album. You know, I'm making... Well, they're not really jokes. I want to see it happen, but I'm making the jokes about Tony Awards for the Flamey Lips. <laughs> but the first Grammy Award that you guys ever won was from for this album, right? Yeah, which which was another you know completely unexpected. Um, you know, we we would have just previous to that would be making uh, jokes about how ridiculous the the Grammys are and all that, and then um, you get invited to them and you still think it's a like this is a joke or whatever and then you win you know and you're like well how, is it a joke if we win and of course you know when when we won it's like no it's great that we won it's you know it's not you know um do you remember but, who you were yeah. up against well it was you know it, what, it wasn't for an album it was for instrumental so our you know a lot of flaming ups albums have instrumentals on them you know and there's a lot of categories in the grammys you know i don't know if you even watch it on tv there's anymore, like but, eight yeah there's like 86 yeah there's so there's lots of them and the, then the ceremony takes all day i mean so they only show you the very end of it where all the you know the big stars are all there but you know the ceremony really goes on all day so we were there probably 11 o'clock in the morning of this <laughs> day that's the grammy day and they're giving out all these awards you know and um i just looked yeah, up who you beat yeah. can i tell you who you beat government beat you slash 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 and Joe Satriani. Yeah, yeah. And Tony Levin. Congratulations. <laughs> um, well, no, it was it, it was fun. I mean, because, you know, you have to remember this is I mean, we don't go to the Grammys very often. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we I don't know if we'd go now, but if we were asked, we might think about it. But, you know, back then to be asked to go to the Grammys is just such an absurd moment that we were just like, what? You know, so 
we were only going to just be part of the absurdness, you know? And then, you know, we didn't really think we were going to win. We didn't really care if we won or not, you know? And then when we won, the whole thing just became just ridiculous. Like, oh my gosh. And then the, the, we put out, we won another Grammy for you've the won, album that came out. Yeah, you've won couple. three Grammys. Yeah. Congratulations. That's amazing. Yeah. We need the Tony yeah. to go with it. But it did, <laughs> but it did start with Yoshimi and I, and yeah. this record, I think, you know, it's a, it's crazy that we're talking about, you know, speaking of time flying 20 years later, but I think this yeah. is the one that kind of, I mean, yeah. for lack of a better way to put it, really broke the flaming lips, even more than she don't use jelly did. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think it was, it's, yeah, you, you got to have like a couple of things to break through. I mean, I, that, that, that you're right though. You could have one and then people kind of were like, yeah, they, is, then you got to have a couple of things. And I think, yeah, by time, uh, Yoshimi Battles of Pink Robots came out and the song Do You Realize and all that uh -huh. you know it was kind of like people had probably heard of us people had probably like or hate us or whatever it is you're like yeah I think I know those guys you know and then you get a couple of things and before you know it people who don't have any idea who you are will say oh yeah I think I know those guys and yeah I think I think Yoshimi Battles of Pink Robots definitely did that and it was well into your career I mean even She Don't Use Jelly was well into your career but uh, Yoshimi was like yeah, F 15 years or something into the since the formation of the lips, maybe more. And uh, right. maybe almost 20 years, if you count, you know, from the very beginning. Yeah. I mean, we formed in 1983. So that's like oh. 20 years later. But, you know, I mean, for us, I don't know, you know, the success really on our terms really happened even from the day one. Like, you know, mm. our mothers liked our records and, you know, our brothers and our friends and and people always wrote great things about our music. And, you know, every step along the way, it, we didn't need very much validation. And we always got more than enough. And like, yes, this is amazing. And so, um, you know, by the time we won the Grammy, um, we, we didn't really care. And, you know, I, and I, don't, I don't mean to say that in a bad yeah, way. It was I just, get it. We, didn't, we didn't need the music industry to tell us we're great on television, you know, but you know, after you do, it's, it is, it's great. It's a great thing. And, and it, and it's a, it's, it, you know, it's sort of a more, I don't know, it's a marker to people that don't know anything about you or don't know anything about your music to say, well, and it sounds cornball, but it's, that's the word you used. I think um, <laughs> people say, well, if they want a Grammy, they must be great. <laughs> you know? And, well, I mean, it's not know. just about the award, although of course that's great. That's nice. But it's the fact that, you know, the album probably got more mainstream attention than bes anything yeah. besides yeah. maybe she don't use jelly that you'd ever done. Right. That, you and, know, it, and, it, the, and it's more of a mainstream album. It definitely is. Yeah. 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 So I'm actually curious if that was something because if I'm not mistaken, you tell me if I'm correct in this assessment that after Yoshimi, I feel you guys kind of never were that pop or mainstream again. Like this would be like your pop masterpiece of an album and the other stuff you've done since has gotten increasing, you know, kind of maybe even revisiting yeah. the most experimental stuff you did at the early start of your career. Was there some kind of agenda going into it? Like let's make our, our big no, pop record or anything no. like that? I mean, we were just, you know, we 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 made this the record, the Soft Bolt, and it came out in 1999, and it was successful enough. Uh, I mean, on our level, anyway, that we sort of felt like um, the label Warner Brothers they would probably let us make. What I mean is that probably give us money and stuff to let us make another couple of records. So we don't. We were feeling like, oh, we could probably do anything we want for a little while, and you know, get away with it. And so we were, but you know, we were. We'd been working with our producer, Dave Fridman, at his studio a lot, a lot, a lot. His studio started in 1996, and we were we were up there since 1997. That's 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001. So by the time we're done with Yoshimi Battles of Pink Robots, it's a pretty intense five or six years of, you know, writing music and recording music and producing music, all very intensely, intensely. And so I think that that really helped, you know, because we could – we could think of stuff that we liked and we could we could write stuff that we liked and we could also make it sound the way that we liked, which isn't that easy. I mean, a lot of times people have, you know, things that they are trying to do, but, you know, it goes it goes wrong or it goes different than what they expected to where it's like we were really, you know, working in a zone that we were good at. Dave Fridman's studio was, a, you know, he's a master, master producer now. But back then he was, you know, he was he was willing to experiment and try stuff that none of us had ever 
tried before. So in that way, it was just an exciting record to make. And I think it just, you know, coincided with the sounds of the time, which we wouldn't have never been that up on. We wouldn't have really known what was popular and what wasn't, you know, our stuff is always a mixture of like, old stuff and new stuff and i don't know i don't know what the music industry is like or whatever. <laughs> so i think for us it was just a big surprise like oh people like it and then oh people think it's like pop and people think it's like normal and we're like yeah you know which is <laughs> which is great you know i mean because i think a lot of times people think it goes the other way it's like you know as artists you don't want to be you know you want to make freaky and you know challenging music or whatever and we thought this record, the way that we were making it was challenging for us. It was mm -hmm. like a no record that we had ever made. And it was it was experimental in its own way for us. It just doesn't sound that way. So, mm. you know, it's just, well, just, it, just does. A weird yeah. it does by maybe other band standards, but maybe not right. by Flaming Lips standards. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a good way to put it. So, but all of, all the stuff that ha happened with it um, were amazing. It's amazing, amazing. And then it allowed us to keep evolving and to keep writing and keep producing all that stuff that you know you got to have a little bit of success or you kind of don't get to play around you know and it's just the way it is and so yeah all that success and like you said i mean it's 20 years into being a group and we'd already had some successes some success some failures you know over and over and over you have successes and failures and you know if you're lucky you get to keep going you you learn more about what you want to do and what works and what doesn't work and, you know, what works for you. So I think we are lucky. I think we got to make it, you know, our way, which we wouldn't have been very happy if it would have been successful, but we didn't get to do it the way we wanted. So doing it the way we wanted allowed it to be like, well, if it fails, who cares? And if it succeeds, even better. Fuck it, you know. <laughs> Well, you mentioned Do You Realize, so obviously I've got to ask about that song because, yeah. I mean, I, I think it's quite literally one of the most, like, requested songs for people to have play at their own funeral if they're, like, planning their funeral playlist. It's on mine. Yeah. I want to have, yeah. if I have a funeral, I think I'm going to have this song be my funeral song. Well, I, I think it just goes to show. I mean, I'm sure if there's some, there's some uh, you know, way that we could, we could, figure out the algorithm of people that want to plan their own funerals like the flaming lips. There must be some correlation there. You know? <laughs> the pe people that don't plan their own funerals don't pick it or something. No, um, no, but you know, <laughs> all that stuff happening in time. I mean, I think if that would have happened to us in 2002, we would have been like, Oh no, we're like, like, we're not that sort of group. I mean, you know, you have identity crisis, Mm. all the time you know you never settle on who you are you're always like no i'm this i'm that you know mm. um and in time i think we've really grown to understand that and to love that and to embrace that and to have that be part of what we're about and not be like you know frustrated about that that thing because music is very useful in that way and a lot of times music like that is dismissed as being like oh who cares about that but in time, I think we really did. We came around to the idea of like, wow, that that's a great thing. It's not a it's not oh, an embarrassing. Thing. Wait, yeah. so to, yeah. just to clarify what you're saying, when the, at first that idea did not sit well with you that people would play your music at funerals or this particular song. Right, it would be at, at funerals. It'd be you know like when kids are born. You know, people would send us videos and say, and they'd use that in there or you know, big powerful sort of you know mainstream family occasions, which. <laughs> you know, would be like, what are we doing there? You know, but yeah, I think in time we started to see like, oh, well, this is the real, this is the power of music. It's not, they're not playing it because it's the flaming lips. They're playing it because of what the song means, which, you know, for a songwriter, I mean, that's as, that's as great as it gets. That really is the peak of yeah. having communi communicated with people at such a powerful emotional time in their life. So yeah, I mean, I think, I could easily say we were stupid for thinking that and we were wrong for thinking that. And in time, we were allowed to come to it our own way and be like, what were, what were we thinking? This is amazing. So, yes, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd say we, we were completely stupid about it. Yeah, I'm surprised <laughs> that it, there was ever a time when you didn't like that idea. I guess maybe did, was it like, did you? Well, I, I mean, I think if if you would have said 
write a song that does that, we would have never been able to do that. We'd have been like, yeah. well, we, we, we don't write, we can't write a song like that. But to be free and write whatever is in your heart and whatever you know is coming to you as a, you know, as an artist, to have a song like that happen, that is that's what I mean by it. I did, you know, we didn't set out to do that. I, I don't know if you know, if anybody can really. I think you just get lucky or whatever, you know. Um, so yeah, in that way, it's like yeah, it's 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 the it's the greatest thing ever. Where I mean, I couldn't be more grateful and more surprised and more blown away that here is a song that is really is useful I and mean, i say it all the time but it's like i wish we had written the song happy birthday how great <laughs> and useful and simple and perfect is that you know didn't you so, wait you i saw you play at the wilter and, and yeah. you sang happy birthday to someone in the audience just like so we two did. weeks ago and didn't you say on stage it was like the greatest song ever written or it something? is i mean it's so and it's like it's so easy to sing it's so useful and it's you know it's it, and everybody gets to join in and and especially nowadays you know since the since the pandemic you know appears to be mostly over especially with concerts or whatever um that's what that's what concerts can do that really no other you know format lets you do is sort of be there together singing songs that kind of have a, have a personal meaning for everybody there but also have a, a universal meaning you know for everybody there um it's yeah it's amazing and and i think our audience likes that sort of thing you know we get to there's someone in the audience that's going to remember this night you know for the rest of their life and you know it's just it's just a great um fun moment and, well, and, it's, as, a, and it's a great song yeah as great as happy birthday is i want to go back to a song you wrote do you realize because you said obviously you did not set out to make it a funeral song or a celebration right. a family celebration song but <laughs> what what you know what did inspire you to write a song. I mean, I think the reason people think of it as funerals is the whole like, someday oh, you'll yeah. die, but see, oh yeah, yeah, seize the moment yeah, yeah. kind of vibe. Well, all those things are themes that you know Stephen and I, the other the other songwriter, you know, that's that's doing these songs with me. I mean, these are all things that are are, are part of our 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 emotional expressions. You know, I mean, we really are about that stuff, and it's and it's so uniquely, I don't know. It, like something that I would sing, I, you know, it, it, no one else would sing a line, well, I, you know, I, well, I don't know, maybe someone would, but I, you know, that line of like everyone, you know, someday will die in this type of poppy, slightly uplifting, slightly sad, slightly happy, slightly moving along type of song. And so in that way, it, we would have thought, well, no one's going to embrace this because it's, it really is a weird way to look at living and dying, you know, but mm -hmm. We were wrong. I mean, in a way, it really is. And I think that's the power of music. You know, the music does unlock these deep things inside of all of us in a way. And they unlock it for the sometimes for the person that's even making the song. I mean, I would, mm. you know, I don't always feel like I'm responsible for the songs when they're, especially when they're that amazing. You know, you're lucky that they happen and you're lucky that you're the vehicle and you're lucky that you're the one doing it. But you don't really know how it got the way it got you know there's you got your cat there yeah, um she's very interested in what you have to say about yeah. life and death <laughs> we i mean there's just a lot of magic that is happening and but at the same time you know where we were making this album and it was and i want to dismiss it but it, it was just another song that we were working on and we were wow like i said we were in a good zone and there was we sort of knew what we were doing and knew what we were wanting and it was working and we did it and we we're like, oh, that worked good. And then we were on to the next song. It was, you know, that's how what you got to do, you know? Um, and we didn't, we didn't, when we, when we finished it, we didn't think, well, that one's special, more special than the other ones or anything. Wow. It was, yeah. I mean, we were glad to be working on something that we all liked and was working. And yeah. When did you, I mean, obviously, you know, we're talking about the context of that, that song has taken on. When did you realize that even if it had, it maybe <laughs> seemed, special to you that it was special to other people was there a certain story you heard or some or you know particularly well, touching it, or anything yeah i mean really after it came out we saw it uh, you know immediately you would see people would react to that song when we played it live even if they didn't know it previously and um everybody that would hear it in the context of knowing the flaming was like wow what a magical song and 
but it wouldn't be the only song they would say that you know we'd had you know, three or four others that they would be you know liking as well but you know it would start to gain momentum and then i think the more that we would embrace this idea of i mean there's people at our shows every night um and a lot of artists have this you know thing happen where it's like you know their mother just died or their brother was just in a car accident it's something horrible has happened but they've been able to come to a concert because they know you're going to do this song that is kind of connected to this healing and this grief and all this stuff and we're going to try to make it as uplifting and as personal and as powerful you know all that that you can do when you're kind of face to face with an audience like that and they're and so in that way that's a tall order you know that's a that's a big that's a big event for a dorky band like the Flaming Lips. So that's what I mean. In time, I think we've really learned to embrace that and love that and want it to happen and and want to help people if if, if music can help people in that way. But mm -hmm. I think back in 2002, we would have just been like, I mean, we were already thinking of making another record even then. We're like, we're making records. Leave us alone. We don't. I don't know what's going on with you. You know, it would have just been. Yeah. Um. But yeah. But in time, I think we we're you know, we learned and we we were lucky enough to have these experiences that changed us and made us think, oh, this is great. But but I don't, that's, it, it's just a funny thing because it's to say the song is great. It isn't us saying that we're great. I think it's, it, it is a great, great song. And we're very lucky that we're the, we're the band that gets to do it. Cause it's a lot of, it's a lot of coincidences, a lot of confluences of things coming together that allow that song to have that meaning. And we're not responsible for it. We're responsible for some of it, but a lot of things that happen to music and stuff, you just, you got to give it to the world and the universe and say, let them, let them make of it what they will, you know? Well, I think you should take some credit for it. And you, sh <laughs> you should when you win your Tony award, eventually. Okay. <laughs> I'll see you at the Tony awards. I do need to let you go, but I want to okay. wish you a happy Halloween. Oh, thank you. Merry well, Christmas. Thank you for wearing that shirt and, and reminding me of Des Mackin up and all that. It was great, yeah. great talking to you. Happy Halloween. Happy thank Christmas. You. Happy birthday. Yes. Uh, and very, very far from the distance, I will have many, many years from now, more than 20 years, hopefully, I will have Do You Realize play at my funeral. Just letting you know. Just point it Definitely out. Definitely more than 20 years. Yeah, like 100 years. Let's say that. Okay, let's say that. Right. Many happy birthdays to come. And uh, it was wonderful speaking with you, Wayne. Excellent. Well, thank you. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.